Welcome to my channel. I'm here to make you think. I'm here to enlighten you and show you things that I pee. But before I do that, can you please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel? And be sure to ring that post notification bell so that you can receive a notification the moment I drop a video. And I thank you in advance. Welcome back, coffee drinkers. How y'all doing? Hope y'all enjoying y'all Saturday. Today, this video is going to be about Paul Mooney. Unfortunately, we lost Paul Mooney on May 19, 2021, the other day at the age of 79 years old. Paul Mooney was a comedian, actor, you know, writer, you know what I'm saying? He also did some films and, you know, he just did a lot of jokes. You know, he was a funny man. This man, you know, wrote things for other comedians, you know what I'm saying? Such as Richard Pryor, you know what I'm saying, and others. And he's been around for a long time. He um, he was um, 79 years old, like I said, and he's had a 56-year a career, you know? You know, out here in these, you know, acting streets and just working streets. You know, and he's been controversial because he always spoke about racism. And racism is a lot of things, you know, that's one of those things that they do not like you talking about. Especially in Hollywood because they don't want you, they don't want black people to stand up for themselves. They don't want other black people to start thinking. You know what I'm saying? They don't want kids to think. So basically that's why they, he was always controversial. Basically just for telling the truth. And like I said, he was a co-writer, you know, for Richard Pryor. You know what I'm saying? A lot of his jokes. And um, Richard Pryor and Paul Mooney, they also wrote together. They collaborated together. Some, um, a, few, you know, a few episodes of Sanford and Son together. Now, you know that was funny because Sanford and Son, man, I think it had six seasons. I got at least five of them. And this show was one of the funniest shows ever. This is still funny. The jokes are still timeless. You know, like some stuff would be like up to date and there'd be, it's not as funny because, you know, you hear it back then. But now they got stuff that they said back then that you really don't even hear now. Because that's just how one of a kind Sanford and Son was. So to be a part of that, that was a big deal. And also, like I said, you know, he was also in film. You know, look at Paul Mooney. He was real young on this photo. I'm not sure how old he was, but you could tell it was like a 70s type of era. And, uh, you know, he had played Sam Cooke in the Buddy Holly story. And I think that was perfect because look at him. I mean, he looked, he, him and Sam Cooke really favor. I thought that was a good matchup right there. I don't think I could have picked a better person, so I think that was like a perfect matchup. <clears throat> Yeah, his story was sad too, Sam Cooke's story, but this is about Paul Mooney, so yeah, let's jump back on Paul. But yeah, <clears throat> so like I said, Paul will talk about racism. I know I said a lot, but this was his main thing. He was joke about it, you know, sometimes, but a lot of times it really wasn't jokes. As a matter of fact, it really wasn't never jokes. It was him just keeping it real. You know, he'll be doing stand-up, but he'll be speaking, you know what I'm saying, about racism. And people will, you know, laugh and stuff. But, you know, he wasn't joking. You know what I'm saying? He'll tell you, you know, I'm being for real. Like, they'll have comedians say certain things, or they'll allow them to say a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? For years. You know what I'm saying? Until they decide maybe they don't want to see him no more, or they'll get rid of him and stuff like that. But they'll let them say certain things because they don't really want you to take them serious. You know what I'm saying? They'll say certain stuff, and then you won't take it for real. Like, he had played on, um, you know, the Dave Chappelle show. And the Chappelle show, he had played a character named Negro Domus. And on this show, he would mention how white people would be playing, like, Mexican roles. They'll play black roles. Like, it mentioned, like, how Brad Pitt played the Mexican. And it would show how, um, you know, Elizabeth Taylor had played Cleopatra. Like, come on now. Cleopatra was a black woman. Elizabeth Taylor was clearly a white woman, so she shouldn't have been playing that. But, you know, that's the type of stuff that he would say. People didn't like it, but, you know, he was just keeping it real. He was named Negro Domus, and he also was featured on Hidden Colors 3. This is a series of uh, consciousness, conscious DVDs about the hidden truths about black people that we didn't know about that never taught us in school. He was on that one. That was um, 3, and it was called The Rules of Racism. So I thought that was fitting, and it was perfect for him, you know what I'm saying, because that's what he'd be on. Here's a clip of him doing some stand-up, but the audience is laughing because they think that it's just joking, but they should know he's not joking. He's a black man. Check this out and just peep what he be saying and watch how they react. Even blacks, white, everybody talks shit when it comes to race. Everybody talks about their Swedish grandmother, their Chinese cousin. Everybody, all, everybody tries to diss Africa. Nobody want to talk about their big black fat African grandmother. They don't. They want to talk about everything else. And I want to give everybody in the room your nigga wake up call. If I leave the room and take Africa with me, guess what goes with me? Big lips, big titties, big asses. All the big shit goes with me. You'll be some little dick, flat butt, little titty, 
motherfuckers if I take Africa out of here. Or you'll be at the surgeons all the time trying to get some shit. That's real. And so let's not leave Africa out. Let's keep Africa in. Now you see what he was saying right there? That's not a joke. That's the way to get it in there, get that truth in there, because a lot of people don't realize what he was really saying. That's a fact. When I went to school, most kids, and even I was I was guilty of this, you know, because our dad always made us, you know, think Africa was a, a jacked up place, you know? So we'll say, yeah, I have Indian in my family. We might say something goofy like, yeah, it was my, yeah, I got mixed people in my family with pretty hair, good hair. We would say that stuff because we were lost as kids thinking that because straight hair was good hair. That's good hair to them. But I would never want hair like that. I, I prefer my hair, you know what I'm saying? To each his own. I'm not knocking, I'm just saying. And they would let comedians, you know what I'm saying? They would let comedians say certain things because they think that, you know, you wouldn't take them serious, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, the comedian said, they just laugh at like it's a joke. And sadly, they used to work. But I'm sure it resonated with some people because they was keeping it real. They and they used to try with Dick Gregory. You know what I'm saying? They knew people wouldn't believe it, maybe because he was a comedian. But watch this. This he's gonna. This is a clip of Paul Mooney being asked if comedians can be racist or not. And check out Paul Mooney's answer. I want you to listen very, very closely to this question and answer. Can black comedians be racist? A black person can't be racist by definition. Why is that? Because we don't have any control of people's lives. We can't. I can't tell you what neighborhood to live in. I can't tell you what school to go to. I can't tell you you're a second-class citizen. I can't tell you that you can't vote. If I get on that corner and say, I, I get on that corner for five years and I stand there and I go, I'm going to take me a knife and I'm going to cut your throat and I'm going to take a car and I'm going to run you over and I'm going to take this hammer and I'm going to beat you till you dead. If I never kill anybody, am I a murderer? When I kill somebody, what does that make me? A murderer. I don't care what I talk about. I can talk about it all day long. All we do is talk. White folks do. White folks make laws. There's laws in the book. I'm from Louisiana. That said, if you marry out of your race, you go to jail. You understand? There's laws that you can't own property. They make laws. Laws. You can't vote. You can't go to school. You can't live in this area. I'm so glad he did that message. I'm so glad he was up there saying that because a lot of people are still confused as to what racism is. They actually think that racism is if you just simply, you know, look at another race and be like, I don't like that person. That's not racism because you're not liking them. It's not going to stop them from being able to get bank loans or living in certain areas or getting certain, you know, good deals on insurance. And, you know what I'm saying, being able to buy this property and that property, you know what I'm saying, just be able to live a normal life without the racism because, you know, um, we don't have that type of privilege. OK, so racism is not just liking someone, you know, that's prejudices. You have the ability to control me, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, where I live and things like that, we don't have that kind of control, and that's what he's saying. People need to overstand it because people still to this day call black people racist and say that we're, you know what I'm saying, exercising racism. No, we're not. We just want to be left alone, you know what I'm saying? And that was the point that he was saying, you know what I'm saying? I wish that people would get that message, and I hope they got that message. And if you didn't get it from him, I hope you just got it from me. Because black people just want to be left alone. It has nothing to do with anything else. Period. And also, like I said, Paul Mooney had wrote jokes for, uh, you know, Richard Pryor. And they had a, you know, close relationship. You know, very close relationship. And uh, in a moment, you'll see just how close that relationship was. Now, this was a roast. But to me, it was Richard just going ahead. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was Richard Pryor going out there in comedic style, his own way. Because, you know, he was high as a kite. We all know that he used to do drugs. But I'm going to say it was allegedly that he was high. You know what I'm saying? When he was doing this. But just check out this roast. Quote, unquote, roast. And use your own judgment. <laughs> we call him that with love and affection, <laughs> as all of us know. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I sure wish you'd return my red handkerchief. 
My wife's been wondering where it was. <laughs> I hope it still has her perfume scent on it. <laughs> But really, uh, Paul, it, it's really been a pleasure working with you because we worked together many years ago on the Red Fox show. We started writing together, and we walked into the office with the white man, and Paul didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't, uh, what he did was sucked his dick. <laughs> Now, you can look at that and, you know, and, you know, use your own judgment. You know, you, you might think he was joking, but he wasn't joking because there is another clip where, you know, which probably says some other questionable things. Not really questionable. It's basically down. It's, it's point blank. But I'm not putting it up there because it's not really about him. It's about Paul Mooney. But just check this out. This video is on YouTube. You can check it out and you can see the rest of it. It's like 43 minutes long, something like that. You might want to see it. But this is the type of stuff that goes down, you know what I'm saying, in Hollywood, you know. A lot of time, this is what it takes to stay in the game, you know what I'm saying? And I was shocked when I heard this about Richard Pryor and Paul Mooney. And I don't think they were joking. I think it was just a way to sneak it on in there. You know what I mean? Now, this has nothing to do with his death. I'm just telling you some things about Paul Mooney that you may not have known about. You know, you might have had your curiosities about certain things because, you know, I've never really seen him with a woman, but I know he's been with women because I know he has children, you know, kids. They're grown, they're adults. At least I know of two twins, you know what I'm saying? Two boys that's twins, I know about them, but anyway. Paul Mooney, you know, was definitely an icon and he was definitely a force to be reckoned with, you know what I'm saying? But there's another little thing I have to say about his death. Now, I know they said that, you know, Paul Mooney died of a sudden heart attack. You know what I'm saying? But the only thing about it is it seemed weird because I thought that he had prostate cancer. And I can't really find too much on that. The only thing I could find is that he had prostate cancer back in 2014, but it never said it was cured or anything like that. He died of a sudden heart attack. Nobody mentioned anything else. It just seemed weird. Now, I know that Paul Mooney, like I said, he was somebody who used to speak a lot about racism. And I feel like I hope that nothing, you know what I'm saying, I just know how it go. You get taken out, you know what I'm saying, sometimes. I know he was 79 years old, and, you know, we all know that that's the age, you know, where, you know, your, your heart and stuff, you know, it gets old. It's not as young as it used to be and stuff like that, but, you know, you know me. If y'all watch my channel, y'all know this type of stuff is questionable to me. You know, Richard Pryor, you know what I'm saying, his is kind of suspicious too, but, you know, his is more, I got to go back and look at it here. Because he did have MS. And I know he was on drugs. And drugs caused that. But I just feel like this sudden heart attack stuff. That they come with Paul Mooney. It just seemed like lately a lot of celebrities. You know, you know have you know. They've been leaving us lately. And you know it's just certain things are just questionable. You know I, I question all of them. When it comes to this industry. Because he always up to something sneaky. You know what I'm saying. So you just never know. But you know I just want to let you know. These are all opinions. And this is alleged. But some of the stuff you can clearly see is not alleged. Because you can hear him saying it out of his own mouth. But anyway. Paul Mooney. Peaceful travel to you. You were a funny guy. Thank y'all so much for watching. I appreciate y'all. To my new subs. My new coffee drinkers. And anybody else that's a returning subscriber. I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all give this video a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And also, can y'all make sure that y'all check out my last video. This video was about Ursher. I know I'm pushing it, but it's not getting enough views. Can it get to at least 100 views? Come on, y'all. Let's get it. Have a good day.